That's gonna be the best one of the morning, I believe. There's one. That feels like a pretty good one too. And there's a good example of a bass that's just sitting up in the pads, waiting to eat some bait fish. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. Today we are throwing the Thunder Cricket bladed jig. I just love the thumping action of this lure. We're gonna talk about what makes this lure so special, how to catch fish on it, and quite honestly, we're gonna talk about some things what not to do, all right? Now I've fished quite a bit, and in my early years, I, I struggle with bladed jigs, all right? I admit it, I struggle with bladed jigs. And that's how I wanna do this video, talk about what not to do when fishing a bladed jig, all right? Some, some mistakes that I made that I feel like can help shorten your learning curve, help you catch more fish and have a lot of fun throwing such an awesome lure like the Thunder Cricket. So, it's cold. We are uh, approaching December. Water temps this morning are 57 degrees. You can see I'm out on the kayak today. We're gonna do some fishing, we're gonna do some talking. We're gonna do hopefully some edumacating on the Thunder Cricket and uh, see if we can catch some fish and uh, give out a few tips along the way. Let's go. All right guys, if we have not yet had the opportunity to meet, my name is Jeremy with Fishing Alone Star. I'll leave the channel information below. Would love if you would hop over there and give me a subscribe on my channel, Fishing Alone Star. Doing what I can to grow the channel, to give out fishing tips, tricks, weekly updates, things like that that are happening and helping me catch fish to hopefully help you catch more fish too. So be sure to check that out. But today we are talking all about bladed jigs. How to use them, I'll go a little bit into the gear that I use, but really wanna talk about the three things not to do. So let's dive in and talk about number one, the thing not to do is to reel it too fast. And I'll talk about why that's important. There's one. That feels like a pretty good one too. All right, guys, it's a good little fish right there. Came up and just ate it. Nice, healthy, fat fall fish. And uh, there's that uh, Thunder Cricket with the swammer just getting chewed on. That's fantastic. Great fish. Man, I love this bait. So good. All right, guys, much like a crankbait, a bladed jig is meant to be fished slow. Now, sure, absolutely, you can burn them, you can bring them over grass, you can pop them in and out of hydrilla, et cetera. Yes, you can, you can do many things with a bladed jig. We'll talk about that as well during this video, but one of the main things you wanna do is reel it slow, because one of the things you don't wanna do is reel it too fast, all right? The, the, the ideal thing to think about is to throw this lure as slow as you can while still getting this blade in front to vibrate. All right, you should be able to feel the vibration. So go as slow as you can while feeling the vibration. It's gonna allow just you to catch more fish. Yes, there's opportunities and times where you can burn them. We'll talk about that. But for the most part, fish it slow. Do not, do not fish this lure too fast. Now, I know personally when I first started fishing the Thunder Cricket, I really liked the thump of it but i also was reeling it way too fast so this this that i'm using is a 6.8 to 1 gear ratio reel uh, i prefer this gear ratio for both bladed jigs and for throwing crankbaits on so just fyi that's kind of what i do is i throw this both on my cranking stick and what i call kind of my chatter bait bladed jig thunder cricket uh setup so that's what I like to do. And as I'm even talking, I'm starting to reel too fast. So I have to remind myself as well, don't reel too fast. You wanna just barely reel this thing so that you're feeling the vibration. Now I'm currently sitting in about 13, 14 feet of water. However, up in front of me is about five or six feet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it out there. Let it sink just a little bit. This is a half ounce Thunder Cricket, so it's gonna be a little heavier, it's gonna sink a little bit, and I want it to get down to the bottom, especially in these colder months. Uh, but really anytime, even in the summer, uh, the only time sometimes I will burn it and reel it fast, the same reason you know, if I throw it way up there shallow, it's gonna be two, three foot up there. So I'm gonna throw it up there, but then burn it really quickly because I don't want this to get bogged down or stuck. But then I'm gonna slow it back down as I pull back off into a little bit of deeper water. So 
just a couple different scenarios of when you may burn it or when you may fish it slow and look if you're fishing it slow and you feel yourself hit a uh, brush pile or you feel yourself hit grass just give it a quick pop up and it'll shoot right up and quite honestly a lot of times when you're pulling it up like that out of grass or out of an obstruction that's usually when the fish that's sitting in it is going to swim up and eat it right because they see that prey or that bait fish kind of fleeing all right so that's uh, a couple of couple of things to consider and keep in mind when you're reeling and retrieving a bladed jig. Don't reel too fast. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I like throwing bladed jigs on a glass rod. So this is a TFO tactical glass bass rod. It's a 7.4 medium heavy, but a faster tip. So it's kind of like a moderate to fast action tip. Um, but one thing I really like about the glass rod is it loads up really well when you're throwing a bladed jig. Uh, keep in mind, it is a moving bait. You do have a big, big stout hook on this thing, but the fish are going to load themselves, right? They're going to set the hook themselves because they're swimming after it. They're throwing, or I'm sorry, you're throwing a moving bait. They're swimming after it pretty quick. You don't need to just rip their faces off. We'll talk about the hook set in just a minute of what not to do. But just so you know, that a uh, little bit of a slower action rod that the glass rod gives you is also going to help them uh, not only hook into the fish but land the fish as well help soften the blow a little bit uh, when that bass comes crashing in to uh to your thunder cricket all right guys let's talk about the second thing not to do and that is to rip or pull this bait away from the fish now let me explain that all right if you notice a bladed jig thunder cricket is going to swim like this right the head vibrates up like this now if you notice if i bend this back it doesn't quite come close to the touch of the hook but it almost serves as a bit of a weed guard right because if it's swimming like this it's going to block timber etc from hitting your hook right that's that's a good thing until a fish goes to bite it right so imagine your bait swimming like this fish comes and bites it they're likely unless they just miss that front blade and catch the hook and you don't have to worry about it but if they catch that front front blade too and as soon as you feel this you go to set the hook when you pull it's going to pull that blade forward and blow the fish's mouth open and if you do that you're going to miss fish so how do you prevent that with your hook set as soon as you feel a bite do not jerk rip etc you just want to lean and then steady reel and the fish will hook themselves but if as soon as you feel that fish bite this if you go to pull it i'm telling you you're going to blow the fish's mouth open in this action right here and you're going to miss a bunch of fish on the bladed jig okay the thunder cricket's designed to deflect with this front blade to move water with this front blade to make noise with this front blade but if the fish also gets that in their mouth you're going to miss it because of the front blade so again if you wait just a second let that lure slide down in the fish's mouth and then set the hook you're going to get them with the hook every time all right so lean into them with your hook set and then reel you have much better hookup ratios with a bladed jig so right now i'm fishing this thunder cricket and up in lily pads you'll see some lily pad stems sticking out kind of a shallow water uh, but you know these fish will still they're still used to being in the lily pads all year long so even though right now we're in the cooler months and these pads are dying off bait fish is still present bass are still present and you can still catch them in these lily pads oh there's one and not only that but the thunder cricket also deflects off the pads really well And there's a good example of a bass that's just sitting up in the pads way neat some bait fish so good little fish right there another one on the thunder cricket all right now today i've been throwing the thunder cricket on a little paddle tail swim bait but tip number three of things not to do don't be afraid to switch up to a crawl okay so you can throw a crawl on the back of the thunder cricket as well and it'll ride a little bit higher in the water column so right now i've been throwing again the paddle tail but a crawl style like this also works really well coming through thicker grass and thicker pad it'll allow it to uh, stay a little bit upright and not turn over quite as much but there you have it both those green pumpkin 
one with a paddle tail, one with the crawl, both of them highly, highly effective. There's a decent one. That's gonna be the best one of the morning, I believe. Thought he was better, but another little short, short fat chunk. But, uh, these fish are healthy and they are chewing the Thunder Cricket. Such a great lure any time of the year. Any time of the year, you can break this out, throw this thing, and catch some fish. Awesome. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for us out here today using Strike King's Thunder Crickets. Now, this is a very versatile lure. It's great to use any time of year. And again, the three things what not to do that I've learned from is A, slow down a little bit, or I should say one. <laughs> one, slow down a little bit, fish it a little bit slower, and you'll get more bites rather than burning it all the time. Now, if you're fishing shallow like I was there at the end, then absolutely burn it, fish it shallow. Uh, but majority of the time, fish it a little bit slower, as slow as you can, while still feeling the vibration. That's exactly how you should fish this. And number two, ease into your hook sets, okay? You wanna kinda of lean into them, don't jerk and rip as soon as you feel the fish bite you're gonna you're gonna miss hook sets i promise you learn from my mistakes in fishing this lure and ease into your hook sets lean into them and then reel down the fish will set themselves you don't need to jerk hard you will miss them okay so learn from me ease into your hook sets lean into them and you'll catch more fish and the last thing we'll cover is just vary your your trailers all right don't be afraid to mix it up i like to always throw a paddle tail but a crawl works really well a straight tail also works incredibly well on the back of the thunder cricket or the bladed jig so try different trailers on the back depending upon the situation you're in and mix it up have some fun go catch some fish the thunder cricket does a phenomenal job of putting you on fish along with that monster bass the better bag does an awesome job of giving you regional baits each month in the regional pro bag so make sure you check out monster bass the subscription and make sure you subscribe right here to the monster bass channel for more videos like this coming your way all right monster bass go catch one